What's up, everybody? This is Sea Lunch Sports. My name is Kennedy Curley. Uh, Hayden Klinkhammer is the other po- uh, co-host of this podcast, as, long, uh, as well as Ian Sellers. Sorry, I'm butchering my speech, but uh, the three of us are here. Um, today, it is September 4th. We're going to probably release this tonight, and um, I'm sure most of y'all will probably listen to this on September 5th. Um, and that's a big day for all of us. Um, yes. Many of you know, many of you may not. But it's uh, it's the day that two years ago, uh, one of our best friends, Joshua Ochoa, uh, passed away from um, melanoma. And so we want to use this podcast to honor him. Um, later, we will talk about sports. But uh, if you're just listening and you want to listen to sports, uh, we'd love if you listen to this part, too. But, um, you know, I understand uh, it, it, it'll come later. And so we'll talk a little bit about Zeke uh, and the deal that he had this morning. Uh, we'll talk about the picks for LSU, Texas, A&M, Clemson, uh, the Packers, and the Bears tomorrow. And we'll do a list of top 10 young quarterbacks, uh, meaning they're on the rookie deals. Uh, but to start things off, we're going to go ahead and just talk about Josh uh, because this podcast is pretty much for him. Um, and so uh, just to go start things, um, I don't know, this, this is kind of free-for-all. So there's not really a structure to this. Yeah. If you want to share something that, you know, it was a great memory with Josh, then we can do that. Uh, you know, if you want to share how he impacted your life, we can do that, too. Um, so I'm just going to leave this up really to all of us. All right. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think we've already kind of hit on this, but mm-hmm. the motivation behind this and where Sea Lunch came from was, you know, um, in the mor- in high school, in the morning before we go to class, we'd just sit around the library and we just talk sports, and it was similar to this. It was a similar layout where we just kind of, you know, we just friendly banter and we'd mm-hmm. go back and forth at each other. Um, and then of course lunch, and you know, it was kind of like the basis of how a lot of our friendships started, um, especially when mine with Josh was well, just, um, you know, based off of sports. Um, based off of our similarities with the Mavericks and the Cowboys. Um, so I think it's important just kind of, you know, this is in honor of him, and that's kind of what made us want to start it to begin with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, would say, I would say the big thing for me is, you know, Josh and I have always been friends since third grade. So, you know, this just kind of – came as we grew older this part of it um he wasn't exactly the most knowledgeable fan i think i've we've made jokes on here before um (laughs) but definitely with the mavericks um definitely with dirk everything was you know even even if what he was saying was incorrect you know it was very um it came from because he cared so much about the Mavericks specifically. Uh Um, But yeah, I I just think, you know, like we, we kind of talked on this before a little bit. uh, My motivation comes from, you know, trying to honor him. Uh And I think like you said, he wasn't always the most knowledgeable with anything past the Mavericks. But 90% 90% of the time, he was going to be the most passionate. Um, if, if you didn't, or if he didn't agree with you, or you didn't agree with him, mm-hmm. you're going to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, also, if his team beat your team, you're going to hear it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going to hear yeah, it. Like, and, and you're, I'm talking about, I'm a North Carolina fan, and he was a Duke mm-hmm. fan going through high school. Yeah. And so, North Carolina has gotten the, those wins here as of, of late, but in high school, it was mostly... Duke had yeah. the upper edge, and mm-hmm. going to the class, uh, going to class next day, you knew it, it always hurt. It always hurt, man. It really yeah. did. But um, yeah, no, I, 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 um, that was how I got to know Josh, you know, really well too. Was uh, you know, I, I knew who he was coming into high school because he, I think he played basketball at North, and uh, so I. I just knew him as the kid who played with goggles. <laughs> he played with goggles on. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> like, I didn't have anything against him, but, like, I, I just thought that was funny. And then, I, you know, I played basketball with him in, a, you know, at Pierce, I think, during an open gym and mm-hmm. got to talking to him, um, talking with him and, and, and 
you know, we got along really well. Super chill guy, uh, just super nice. And uh, I felt comfortable talking to him really about anything, honestly. Um, we talked about sports. We, you know, the, and one of the things that actually made us like really good friends. It was the first time I, uh, the first time like we, yeah, the first time we really got to be good friends was um, freshman year high school. We, um, Charlie Tapkin, a girl uh, in one of my classes. She came to our college and I was like, man, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm kind of tired right now. She's like, come You're on, you should there. go. A lot of people are going. And I said, okay, fine, I'll go. And so after school, I told my mom, like, okay, mom, I told this girl I was going to go. Um, she, she wasn't like, you know, I wasn't interested in, like, in anything, you know, mm -hmm. other than going to the game or anything. Mm -hmm. But I, this, is, this is part of the story. Uh, she was a good friend. And so I, uh, I mm -hmm. told her I was going to go and... Um, you know, I'm a man of my word. And so I decided I was going to go and I got there and I, got, I didn't know like hardly anybody. Uh, I knew some people, but like, I didn't, I didn't know them really well at all. Um, most people were from North and I didn't go to North. I went to Park Hill. And so I, I sat down and I'm waiting for somebody to walk in that I know. Um, and Josh and Zoe walked in, uh, oh, and, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. And they walked in uh -oh. and I knew Zoe pretty well. And so they, they walked up and I was like, oh, hey, what's up? You know, and uh, I just decided I was going to sit next to them. And the whole rest of the game, me and Josh commentated the volleyball game as though they were just throwing alley oops the whole time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so from that point on, we just like, we talked about sports. Um, I found out he was a Duke fan, found out he was a Mavs fan, Cowboys fan, you know, so we had all these things either in common or not in common at all. Uh, and from there, they're on, you know, I'd sit at the lunch table with you, uh, Hayden, and uh, mm -hmm. him, and uh, every day we'd just talk about sports uh, like it was ESPN First Take or something. Um, mm -hmm. So Josh was just kind of always the guy who, you know, we had that sort of bond with. Yeah. Um, junior yeah. year got really close. Um, you know, I, I would have considered him, you know, maybe my best friend at that time. Um, mm -hmm. I, was, I was really going through a lot, and we had Personal a class stuff, together. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Josh was just, you know, aside from just being a, a guy who we talked to about sports, like, he was just a really, really good friend. Um, and so everything in this show, uh, everything in this podcast, I should say, is uh, is an honor. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's attributed to him. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I will yep. also say... Um, one of the things that someone someone mentioned recently was um, he was talking. It was a I was at a, a thing a pastor was talking and uh, he talked about death because um, he had a friend die in the Iraq War and um, he talked about one of the things that made that that everyone experiences in death is that it brings people closer together um, and I can honestly say that I think that for as as horrible of something you know he was 20 and i i really thought mm -hmm. that that was probably the biggest thing that shook my life um you know i i will say i i believe god uses tragedy to also uh, like he not uh, tragedy doesn't always have to have just bad things associated with it. something good can happen from it um even though it is a tragedy and i will say that um, one of those good things is that I feel like I've gotten closer to y'all. Um, I've gotten closer to other friends. With um, I felt like we were good friends. Now I feel like we're great friends. Um, yeah. and, and so, uh, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. certainly not a, a bright moment in any of our lives, but um, yeah. some brightness came out of it, and I I really am glad about that. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Yep. I wish uh, I wish you'd be here to see our. Uh, Slovenian superstar. Oh yeah, I know he'd be absolutely ecstatic yeah. about that. That's gonna be interesting because that's my boy when Brown's done. So I know. Oh, oh I know. one other I thing. Wait. Yeah, I mentioned he was bad about uh, knowledge of sports. Um, <clears throat> there was one time <laughs> that uh, me and him had a bet because the the Spurs went up two zero against the Thunder, and he bet that the Spurs were not gonna lose a game, and the Thunder came back and swept uh, the Spurs. <laughs> And sounds so, about right. Sounds just, about right. It was funny. He's like, man, they're not going to win another game. And I'm like, man, that's ridiculous. Like, sounds so about he, right. You know, he knew his Mavs and he knew some other stuff, but but the man was a Mavs fan, and so we. 
Hey, love him. At heart, he was a Mavs fan. Oh, yeah. yeah. First and foremost. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. I think that's it. Yeah, that's... If y'all oh, yeah. want that, In terms can. of... Yeah, no, I think that's pretty that's much good. the Josh. Uh, yeah, so um, real quick... Yeah, that looks like it's everything, but uh, I do want to announce, I forgot to announce this at the beginning, but uh, we are switching to a new platform. It's just going to be audio only. And so um, just be prepared for that. If you want to watch this, um, it's not looking like it's probably going to be an option unless Mm -hmm. you DM us, follow us uh, on Twitter at Lunch Sports or me at Kennedy Curly 44, C-U-R-L-E-Y is Curly and Hayden at that boy Clink. Capital T, capital uh, B, capital K. Ian, what was it? I Sellers 37? You nailed it. Good job. I Sellers That's awesome. 37. Good job. Anyway, yeah, if you want to DM us about that, we could look at possibly trying to do that. But for the most part, most people have, I'm guessing, have been looking yeah. at or listening to audio and. Um, just the audio quality is yeah. just a lot yeah. better. So. Yeah. And, um, and you're going to be bailed out of having to look at Hayden. So I'm sure. True. It's true. true. It's true. It, yeah, it might true. be for the better. Yeah. As my hair gets longer and longer. Yeah. yeah. So be be sure to uh, you know just know that we're going to switch to audio mm-hmm. only, um, and let us know how you feel about it, <laughs> um, or about yeah. the sound quality at least. If if we need a yeah. you know a grade up, then we'll look into that too. But mm-hmm. um, that's going to be next podcast. But aside from yes. that, we can go ahead and get into uh, into Zeke's deal. He got a six year extension. For ninety million dollars, um, making him the highest paid running back in the league, and it makes him eligible or not eligible. He was always eligible to play this season, but he is going to be back for the Cowboys this season. So let's just go ahead and discuss the reactions to Zeke's contract, how it affects the Cowboys, does he deserve it? Let's just talk about it all. That that it's a loaded question because there's a lot that goes into it now um he got it it's done and over with um and he wasn't going to come back and play in dallas or anywhere i mean he would have gotten probably the highest paid somewhere else if dallas was to move him um 15 million dollars a year i think todd Gurley's making Mm 14.4 so you're paid you know quite a bit i thought maybe it'd be like just over like it would come in at you know like 14.6 not that that's a huge difference but you know 15 million dollars a year i think over eight years he's eligible to earn like 112 million dollars or something like that that was broken out but you know six years 90 million dollars a lot of money for running back um but i think 50 million guaranteed yeah 50 million guaranteed which is the most guaranteed money ever to a running back, isn't it? Yes. So, it, it, I feel like, you know, it's, it's a lot of money, but Dallas is in that win-now phase. Um, mm, they are. If, if, you, if you don't do it and you lose Zeke, you're not, not going to win a Super Bowl. So, I, you know, I feel like their hands were, were sort of tied in a way. They didn't really have much of a choice, and I think it's But Tony not, Pollard was so great. Tony Pollard would have held it down, but he was not great. Um, so it's not ideal, but you've got to do it if you're Dallas. Um, and I think it's going to hurt later down the road a lot more than it hurts now because it's going to tie up a lot of that money. We need to pay some other big names. <coughs> Dak, Byron. Um, I forgot about him. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, there's only so much money to go around. So we're... It's going to cost us later on down the road, but he's without a doubt the best player on the roster. He's the best running back in the league, so you've got to do it. I'm just not in love with the contract, but I think you had to. Saquon's the best running back in the league, but, you know, sorry. He probably I'll, will be. Right now he's I'll, I'll overstep that. Saquon, that Saquon will get his – he will get paid as the highest running back in the league he will. when his time comes, but yeah. right now uh, I think that Zeke – I think that he deserves to be the highest paid running back because of his contribution to Dallas. I think that he's more valuable to his team 
yep. then probably Todd Gurley. Um, yep. yep. Maybe not Saquon, but I can't really say that Saquon is super valuable to his team, being that the team is they're bad. They're not competing. Yeah, they're not competing. So it's yeah. So he is valuable to his team, but it's not like there's the team is that valuable. You, so so Zeke mm-hmm. is on a team that is a Super Bowl contending team, but they wouldn't be a Super Bowl contending team without him. They, they are. They're. If, what are you rolling your eyes at? They have a chance. I'm to not. Honestly, I, I was shrugging my shoulders. I wasn't rolling my eyes. Okay. I, okay. But they, they have a chance. I, I, um, and I even think it's, it's a decent chance. But um, he's the re- he's the primary reason the offense goes. And we've seen the numbers where Dak Prescott is an average to below average quarterback. I think his QB rating without him is like 87 or something like careful. that. So my thing is, if Zeke were not the focal point of the offense, then mm-hmm. I would probably not want to give him this contract. Mm-hmm. But no, I agree with you. Dak, as much as I love him, is is not going to win a Super Bowl without weapons around him, and Zeke is one of those weapons. And so for that reason, I have to say that I think that six years, ninety million, is is not a bad deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing I will say that six years is is long for a running back, but mm-hmm. he, Hayden and I, I know we've talked about this. I can't remember. Um, yeah, no, Hayden and I talked about this, but Zeke hasn't had injury issues. Knocking mm-hmm. on wood. Um, and yes, please, for the sake of my fantasy team, I if, need this you know, to not put the year he gets injured. The way he looks, too, uh, he looks like somebody who's built to play football for a long period of time. And so, if that is true, I think that six years really isn't that big of a deal. So, that's kind of where I stand on. Also, once you get to year four or five, and he if he is having injury issues, you can cut him. It'll save you some money at the time. Uh, you still might have some dead money, but overall, I think that it was a, a deal that needed to be done. Uh, yeah. It puts the Cowboys back into contention this season. Yeah, it needed to happen. And he's the top three running back in the league, so I think that he deserved it. Yep. Go ahead. Just do it. First off, that is the only Dallas Cowboy that I think deserves that money on the offensive side of the ball. Okay. Um, I've said that from the very beginning. I was probably – this is the only time I've been so on Jerry about paying his players the type of money that they want. Um, so, yeah, I – you know – I don't think there's any question he's the leading rusher in the NFL every year he's been in the league because he would have won it the year he wasn't suspended if, you know, he wasn't suspended. Um, Never been hurt. Um, Is a full workhorse, carries the ball over 300 times a year, not even close. I would argue he's definitely more important to his team than Todd Gurley, probably Alvin Kamara, probably, you know, any of the running backs you want to name. Like Kennedy said, Dak is not anywhere close good enough to probably even sniff the playoffs without Zeke. Um, That's not true, but I get what you're saying. um, But, yeah. On a, another side note, a sneaky move by the Los Angeles Rams. Go ahead and signing Jared Goff to an extension now before Dak gets his money. And Dak's going to want that was smart. a lot, a lot, a lot of money. You know, I, don't, I, I think it's going to be – go ahead, Kenny. I'm sorry. Sorry. I, I think that that actually might hurt Dak's value. Because of the loss that they had to the Rams in the offseason, with, in my opinion, a similar supporting cast. And I say that because maybe the Rams have a little bit better receivers, but the Cowboys have just as good of a running back, arguably. Uh, they still have a good receiver in Amari Cooper. I mean, the Rams' uh, best receiver was out. The offensive line, for as, as maybe underwhelming as it was this season, was still probably better than the Rams. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And. 
the defense was better than the Rams too. And so you could, if you were Jerry Jones, point to that game and say, okay, Jared Goff was the winning quarterback. You didn't do enough to take your team over the hump. Maybe we're going to pay you a little less than him. I could see that being a negotiating uh, no, negotiation point for Jerry Jones. So I'm actually I'm kind of happy that that happened. I don't think Dak's going to be the highest paid quarterback in the league, but I think he'll be up there. Yeah, I, I think he's, I think we ta- I think we texted about this. I think he's deserving of hey, hold your breath here. I think he's deserving of close to twenty five. I think the market's set to where he's going to make about thirty. But I think Russell Wilson's at thirty four. And he doesn't need to be making more than that. Um, so I think with the success of his team. Um, what success? You know, they haven't won a Super Bowl, Hayden, but they've been he hasn't been past, games. He hasn't been past the divisional round. What yep, success? They're winning, they're winning football games. Awesome. So were the Bengals two years ago getting to the playoffs but can't, get, can't win the playoffs? Was that consistent? The Bengals. Yeah, it was consistent. The Bengals would consistently get to the playoffs and lose. Yeah, okay. but the Cowboys have gotten to the playoffs, and they've been winning to their credit. Yeah, so they got to the playoffs. They're, they, got, they were the best team in football their first year when they were rookies. They got to the playoffs. They were the best team in football. They were. They might, well, they're, 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 they were arguably they're there. the best team in football. They were the best team in the NFC, probably. Yeah. Um. In 2016, their rookie so if year. They were the uh, best team in the NFC. How did they not get to the Super Bowl? They were rookies, and I'm not saying that's an excuse, but I'm saying they were one of the best teams. They okay. were the best team in the NFC. Sure, they were. Um, and mm-hmm. then, you know, 2017 was that kind of a dumpster fire. Zeke was suspended. Nothing was clicking on the offensive side of the ball. Um, Why? Defense was- Why? Why was nothing clicking? Was- I don't know. Dak couldn't get them. Okay, Dak's thank you. Fault. Thank you. I'm not. Thank no, right. 2017 was Dak's fault. Okay. And it, and they couldn't get it clicking early with Zeke, and then it just still mm-hmm. felt off. Mm-hmm. Um, and they missed the playoff by. I, they were nine and seven, I think. They missed the playoffs by a game. Um, mm-hmm. um so they were still winning football games. In the weakest and, division in football, probably. And, like, and last year they were struggling bad early on. Got it mm-hmm. together. When Amari Cooper got traded, and then they made uh, it to the playoff, uh, playoff game. They've been, I mean, if they made it to the playoffs, then they won a playoff game. They're getting better. Defense is going to be better. The offense is going to be better this year. They're getting better. So when Dak, you know, if he also, could make it to the Super Bowl, they could make it to the Super Bowl. They could win the Super Bowl. I'm not saying they are, but they, they could. And when that happens, his value is going to spike. And I'm, I mean, I think he's worth, he's going to get paid. 30, 31 million dollars, and I'm not gonna be all that upset when it happens. If the Cowboys win the Super Bowl, I will come on here on recording and say that Dak deserves his 30 million. Until then, I don't want to hear about Dak getting 20 million. He can't complete a wide open pass. I, I want just you to get a, point out. I want you to get a star tattooed on your thigh. Yes. I, uh, I just want sure. to point out that there, there you go. Okay. That was a weird handshake on. Anyway, uh, <laughs> no, I uh, I just want to point out that you said weakest division in the NFL two in years 20, ago, twenty seventeen. Yep, the season that the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Uh huh. So I just just want uh-huh. to point that out. It wasn't it wasn't that week, um, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, Kennedy, I think... Kennedy, did the Eagles, that year, did the Eagles... Would the Eagles have beaten the Saints that year? If not no. for the Minnesota Miracle? But Probably they were still not. a really good team. Thank you. No, uh, they were they were a good team. And they, they beat the Patriots, team. which I think is, is worth who, noting. Who Belichick benched their best corner? So? Yeah, I mean... Kennedy, he can't... context matters. They, be, they beat them with a backup quarterback. Who now is a starter? He's a below average starter, in my opinion. He's not a top he fifteen is. quarterback. He is, but hey, you got it. Come on, don't. I I understand that the Eagles aren't as good 
they're probably the worst Super Bowl winning team of the past ten years. Yeah, um, I don't think it's close. Maybe. Well, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Maybe the Giants. Yeah, that was weird though. Their defense was elite. Um, and so was Phillies, but that you can't. They won the Super Bowl, so you can't just write them off. You can't write off the NFC East in 2017 as the worst division of football. Team won the Super Bowl out of that division. Okay, outside of the Eagles, it was the worst division in football. It was not a good division outside of the Cowboys Eagles. were pretty close to making the playoffs still. But anyway, I I think that Dak. Um, I would say same thing as Ian. I would give him twenty five million dollars comfortably. Comfortably, uh, I would settle at thirty right now, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't go further above that. I've said this in the past. This is not the first time I've said that. No, I you've got to go with the market. No, it's the market. Thirty million dollars, yeah. Kennedy. You, I remember about a month and a half ago, you disagreed with me hard about thirty million dollars. No. When that report first came out, Hayden. When that report first came out, you were like, "This is ridiculous. He does not earn. He is not worth thirty million dollars." I think it was forty because there yeah, were 40, reports. I, I was no, 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 reports that he was. That was, that he was wanting forty million dollars, like he had done something. That was a fake report. Fake oh, report. okay. Yeah, I don't even want to hear sure. that. I'm so tired. I had to hear Jerry, Jerry, Jerry about paying it. I had to the media. Spencer talk about it. Jerry it's paying the media true. to to release no, no, a no, no, fake no, 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 report. No, 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 no. I cannot. If Dak Prescott asked for, and I, you don't know, I back Dak Prescott. You know, I love the guy. But if he asks for forty million dollars, he's delusional. If he asks for $40 million, I just want to get a new quarterback. Is I genuinely getting, I want to will, draft someone will else. Will he get a $40 million contract? No. Jerry will pay it to him. No. I don't think so. No. I, Ian, back to your point about me. I might have said $30 million is too much. Really? I think over time I've, I've decided that I will stretch it to 30 but really not any anymore. 31 yeah. is too much to me. $30 million is my hard cap. Yeah. Um, I think he'll get probably 30 to 32, but I right now, as yeah. of now, I would say 25 is like that's me being nice personally. Yeah, but that's the market that we that we live in. Quarterbacks get paid, you know, decent quarterbacks get paid about that or more. So, yeah, and I think we're both in agreement of he's not he hasn't necessarily earned 30 million dollars, but he hasn't earned 25. You got. I think he's earned 25. But where, you know, where the quarterback market is, a $25 million quarterback is worth $30 million. So. I agree. Uh, I agree, yeah. Uh, let's see. So, do y'all have yes. anything else that you want to talk about there, or do we want no. to do the – Okay, so let's no. go ahead and talk about tomorrow. Uh, we're going to stay on the NFL. Oh. Packers and the Bears play. They start this season off, and I'm mm-hmm. so excited. I actually won't be able to watch it. I'm just excited oh. in spirit. The team, the that team we get to Kennedy watch. says is overrated, by the way, the Chicago Bears. I just want everyone to know that. Underrated. Nah. Underrated. They are uh, going to be good. They were good last season. They're going to drop off defensively just a little bit. Uh, still a good defense. but Yes, but they're going to approve offensively. Maybe a little. Um, I don't know. Mitchell Trubisky looked about like a game manager. Game managers, you notice, game managers have a hard time going from game manager to elite. Oh, I'm not saying he's going to be elite. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think that he's going to be close to elite. I think that he's going to go I from agree. game manager to better game manager. But that's generally about how good it, it but tends he to be. But he doesn't need a... to be elite. He doesn't, just like he might just like be, I'm saying he does. I'm yeah, saying he does is, because the Bears' defense is going to get a little worse. But he has weapons point. around him. Like That's, Allen Robinson? Uh, is that- Trey Burton, um, Tariq Cohen, David Sleeper. Montgomery. Sleeper. That's why I have them in the playoffs. I just don't think that they're going to be that I, just, I I think the Packers' defense is way too bad to, to, to compete in that division. That is yeah. a sleepy, difficult division. I Minnesota is so overrated. Do not get me wrong, but I they're still going to be. They're still going to be tough. That's a tough team, 
it's a tough place to go and win for starters. Um, I found that out the very, very painful way. Um, I, I love that game. The Minnesota Miracle, in case anyone was wondering what I'm talking yeah, that was about. Yeah, it was, incredible probably, it was probably the saddest moment as a Saints fan in my entire life. With, I don't mean to poke too much at you, but this. which one was worse? The the Minnesota Miracle or the, uh, the Minnesota Miracle. The Minnesota Miracle. Worse than the blown pass interference? Yes, yes. Because the Saints still had plenty of plenty of chances to win that game. That's true. That get that was that that was the last play of the game. That should have been over. It shouldn't even have been. Yeah, yeah. And then he did this. He I just know. he did this. Oh, and not, oh. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> that was awesome, yeah. man. I can't even lie. Yeah. That was that was um, incredible. He did this. That was so oh, man. You were talking about game managing <laughs> quarterbacks. Um and you could say Dak Prescott's kind of in the similar category. Um but I, and, and this is kind of tying back into salary. I think game managing quarterbacks on good, good teams have gotten to the point where now they're at the point where they the market determines that they're worth you know, elite money. And I think Dak more so than Trubisky because the Cowboys have had more success. But I think they're kind of similar. Trubisky's better than Dak. You shut your we mouth. We can agree to disagree there. But Thanks for backing me up on Dak for once in your life. Oh, my Kennedy. gosh. I appreciate that. <laughs> y'all, are so, y'all are so cowboy brainwashed. I should say one good thing about it's Dak. Absurd. I defend Dak once. And, and, and Thank you. It's absurd. Thank you. What does, what does Dak do better than Mitch Trubisky? Uh, Mitch Trubisky threw 24 better. touchdowns to 12 interceptions. Uh-huh. So, so he's so he's you, with the football. He you runs put, better. You on you to put Dak Trubis- for not throwing yards, but Mitch Trubisky only threw 3,200 yards. You put Trubisky on Dallas. Are, are y'all better than y'all are now? No. Yes. No. yes. Not even, no. no, we're not. No, the, the Dallas not. Cowboys wouldn't be a Super Bowl contending team with Mitchell Trubisky. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Talking about the Bears and Packers. I okay, so I'm picking the Packers. Picking the Bears. I picked picking the, the Bears by two scores. Double digits. Yeah. I'm picking the Packers by a very close game, somewhere around three. Around three. So um, good, good goal. Yeah, about about a field goal, give or take. 24, 24-14, Bears. Uh, Aaron Rodgers doesn't turn the ball over, and that's that was the very thing. That was the thing that the Packers were, or sorry, the Bears were really good at doing last season was turning the ball over, forcing turnovers. Hey. Excuse me. Aaron Rodgers doesn't do it. Also, one thing I want to point out is that. Um, sorry, what are y'all? What are y'all doing? <laughs> okay, twenty-four, fourteen, Bears. I, I, uh, one thing that needs to be pointed out, I think, is that they have a new offensive coordinator. Well, the Bears mm-hmm. know exactly how to to defend that. I don't know. So I, I think that I'm giving the mm-hmm. Packers a little bit of a, a, a su- surprise element combined mm-hmm. with the fact that Aaron Rodgers doesn't throw picks. So maybe he will. Maybe I'll be wrong. But I think it's going to be a close win for the, for the Packers. And then I think the Bears will become the better team as the season goes on. Let me, let me just – point something out uh last year week 16 aaron Rodgers went 25 for 42 Ow. 270 yards and an interception uh-huh. trubisky 20 of 28 for 235 and two touchdowns i think it's crazy how i don't know how do i word this trubisky isn't even in a conversation with Aaron Rodgers, but the team surrounding that player, like I don't even like I don't think that that's even relevant because Aaron Rodgers is playing the Bears defense, Trubisky is on a better offense playing the Packers defense. So I don't think that really even applicable. I don't I don't like those stats. I agree, but. I just, I, my only point that y- y'all seem to keep going back to the Bears' defense being super dominant. My my disagreement is that I think the Bears are going to come back to earth just a little bit this season. 
They have Khalil Mack. So did the Raiders, and it wasn't like they were all that dominant. But the Khalil Raiders Mack. only had Khalil Mack. Yeah, and the Bears have Khalil Mack and a few other people, but it's they weren't an elite defense until Khalil Mack got there, so it's not like they have... They were, they were an above-average defense. Yeah, they'll, they'll be good. I'm not saying that they won't be good, but they're going to come... The, the turnover statistic is an unreliable statistic. But, Kenny, we talked about this the other day. Defense is an unreliable thing we from year to year. We talked about this the other day. They've always, even when they weren't super dominant at shutting people down, they forced turnovers. Who, so I disagree Bears? with. Yeah. That's, no, I was saying that the, the Rams were that team. But I'm telling you, I, I, the Bears have been that team. The Bears have been a decent defense. They got good last year. And I'm saying that as a turnover uh, producing team, they will not force as many turnovers this season. And defense overall, especially with a new defensive coordinator, I'm not convinced that they're going to be – they'll probably still be a top five to seven defense, probably five, closer to five. But I don't think that they're going to be like the same defense as last season. I think First off, I think that's hard to repeat anyway, even yeah. if they did have the same defensive coordinator. But the game's in Chicago? Defensive coordinator. Yeah. Okay, I just yeah, a part part yeah. of me thinks that the uh, the first game of the season, I I give more of that advantage to Aaron Rodgers than I would Mitchell Trubisky. I understand that argument, but I still yeah. think the pack. I still think the Bears are, you know, by far the better team. Yeah. Um, and I think you're right that that defense is going to be hard to replicate. So they'll probably take a step back. But I think. I disagree with you on how much of a step. Cause I think they go from the best defense in the league last year to still probably finish as a top three defense this year. Okay, and I'll, I still I'll, think they've got they still got a chance at being the best defense, but I don't think they'll take a step, but not much. Uh, okay, that's I'll I, I was that was probably a little bit of a stretch. I'll go top three to five. I'll I'll go yeah. in that range. Um, well, we can move on to college football picks. There are two big games yeah. this weekend. LSU, Texas, and Texas A&M, Clemson. Uh, the very first game is Texas A&M, Clemson, so we can go t- go ahead and talk about that one. Um, shouldn't take too long, but uh, predictions. Let me go ahead and get it out of the way because I'm sure um, I haven't been following college football as closely as I should be, and you guys are probably more knowledgeable on it than I am. Um, I'm going to go with Clemson for two reasons. One, they're the number one team in the country, and two, they're playing your Aggies. Um, so I'm gonna lock in Clemson on that. This is true. This is true. Texas um, A&M will win this game. <clears throat> I'm feeling good. On, statement. All, on, on the statement. road. On the road. I'm, I'm feeling good about this. Texas A&M wins this game. They are at least they will definitely cover the spread. I think it's a 16 point favorite for Clemson. Yeah, that's that's. I yeah, disagree with that. that. They covered we'll that cover last that. year very easily. Uh, they'll it cover is, that this yeah. year again because they're looking for blood again after last season when they should have been the vict- uh, the team that that came out uh, victorious. They played better. They just had more mistakes. <laughs> yeah, they choked. Um, and so I'm going with Texas A and M. I think that losing as many defensive players as Clemson did, uh, I think that that's going to hurt them in this game. But I think it's going to be close. I think it's. Probably going to come down to the wire. I also, yeah, no, I'm I'm choosing A and M. Maybe a little biased, but Texas A and M is my team. Be a little. What's, what what scares me for A and M? I wish I could pick A and M. That would help me in the long run. But um, what scares me for A and M is Trevor Lawrence is coming off probably his worst performance ever, and they still put up 52 points and put up 632 yards. I. I will against, say that against a solid Georgia Tech team, who's usually, you know, at the very least, they give they give big schools trouble because of their running attack. They're um, okay. They're yeah, an okay program that Clemson normally takes oh, care no. of anyway. So I, no, I, think I agree. Trevor I Lawrence, just, yeah, yeah, Travis Etienne is someone who worries me, but A and M's run defense is also really good. Um, and so I'm more worried about the pass defense. I don't. But that exactly. was probably the biggest highlight of AM's first game. Granted, it was against Texas State. So I think it, th- that whole matchup is, it remains to be seen. 
I just think the A&M's offense will actually be able to move down the field against Clemson. Um, so we'll have to see. Mm-hmm. I obviously yeah, wouldn't cool. be surprised if Clemson won, but this is my this is my um, yeah my shocker pick. Okay, I'm maybe going, not I'm super going, shocking, but I'm going with Clemson. It's definitely not going to be a 17 and a half point spread. That's yeah, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't care that Clemson is the number one team in the country. Um, Trevor Lawrence has got to show up. 13 of 23 for two 168 yards and two interceptions is not good enough. That's, I will say one of those interceptions was like one of the before halftime type of interceptions. Mm-hmm. But either way, 13 for 23, one interception against Georgia yeah. Tech is, yeah. is still not that good. Um, yeah, got to show up. Um, well, the next game, Texas LSU, it's going to be at Austin. Mm-hmm. So let's go Should ahead go and ahead predict that this one. out of the way. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to pick the real DBU Texas. <laughs> All right. That was an easy pick. All right. Okay. All I got. Okay. Okay. I'm picking uh, LSU. Uh, I I maybe a month ago I would have considered picking Texas, but I I do think LSU is going to be a really good team this year. Uh, I think that the defense is going to be able to manage uh, Sam Ellinger, you know, pretty solid amount. Uh, he's he is a good quarterback. I think that people hate on him because he's not super accurate, but he overall is a good player, especially in the Big 12. But playing against LSU, it's DBU. Um, Hello, thank you. It, it is um, Joe Burrow going against Texas's defense. I feel more confident in that than than uh, Sam Ellinger going against LSU's defense. So that's fair. What, what, is the, what is what is the spread on this game? Six and a half. That's close. In in LSU's favor. Yes. Gotta be. Wow. So for, forget the home field advantage. <laughs> yeah. Um, LSU wins. Um, but it's going to be very, very close. I, I was seriously considering picking Texas. Were you really? I, the, you? I, I seriously was considering picking Texas. No. I think you're just saying that. No, so, I, I so literally, not, I've, uh, changed, <laughs> I've changed my pick three times in my head already. Okay, real quick. Give me, if, if Texas were to win, why would they win? Their DBU. Uh, they f- they'll force um, LSU to play catch up. Uh, if they if they get out ahead early by let's say ten nothing in Austin, um, I know we saw that with Joe Burrow last year against UCF, but that's UCF. I mean, you know, this is a whole different type of thing. Um, I still haven't seen. He played great, don't get me wrong. I think he's going to be really good for us this year. But I think this is the one loss we can afford. Um, but I'm picking LSU, but, like, by three. Yeah. I'll say by three, yeah. Well, that concludes our picks for the big games coming up in the next few days. Um, we might do some more of that coming into – you know, Sunday, I don't know. We'll see about that. We'll have to talk about that later. But um, now is for the fun part. We're going to do our top 10 young quarterbacks on their rookie deal. So, and, and to clarify, too, we're talking about on their rookie deal right now. So someone who was extended this morning, or was it this morning or yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Someone who was extended is still technically on his last year of his deal. Uh, he's in mm-hmm. his fourth season. Y'all probably know who I'm talking about, but mm-hmm. anyway, uh, he is he is eligible for this because he is in the same year as other quarterbacks on this list. So he that being barely said, made my list. <laughs> You're on drugs. He's not good. I don't know how many times like I. Every single podcast, I feel like we talk about the guy, and I tell you, he's not good. Well, let's let's go ahead and see where he ends up on right. on your let's list. Uh, let's start this off at number ten. 
Well, this is going into next year, by the way. This is. Should I start us off? Go ahead. Go ahead. Tyler Murray, number ten. Okay. Take Tyler Murray, number ten. Tyler Murray, number ten. Are you being? Oh, I'm just kidding. I have Kyler Murray at number ten. I do too. Really? Do you really? No, guys. So, uh, Hayden, I thought you were higher on Kyler Murray than I am. But going into next year, we're talking about going into next year. So yeah. real quick, we we had a discussion through text, uh, group text, our fantasy group text about <laughs> Kyler Murray. One of the things that you and I seem to disagree on is I don't think his ceiling is that high. Do you think it's pretty high? I think it's really high. Yeah, I do. So what? Why? I guess. Uh, he's accurate. Um, he has a good arm. He can run. He makes good decisions. Um, probably has a better arm than half of the guys on this list. Um, no. Definitely better than Dax. Um, uh, that may be the, one of the ones I'll give you, but... Better runner than Dak. No, he's not. Well, uh, that's yet what? That's yet, to be, that's yet to be seen. He's not going to okay. be a more powerful runner. He'll be a more elusive uh, runner, but... I'm, I'm done talking to you. Um, yeah. I, so, so yeah. I, I think that he has a top six to eight... Sorry, so top six to ten quarterback in the league ceiling. Mm-hmm. I don't That's think that he'll ever finish ceiling. top five. That's kind of high. Uh, I would lean closer to six. I, I'm nine. leaning more to eight. There were I texted y'all the list of quarterbacks that I think are better than him, um, wow. who are young quarterbacks. And I'm talking not just this year, but going forward just in general. Um, I came I up with I seven. That. That's fine. I came up with seven. Two of them are not in the league yet. One of them is uh, Trevor Lawrence. The other one is is uh, Justin Herbert. I would take both of them over Kyler Murray in this draft. I wouldn't take Justin Herbert. I, I, I would have taken Justin Herbert over Kyler Murray this draft. I'd, I'd take them both. Both of those guys? I'm not, yeah, I'm not crazy about Kyler Murray. I think his, uh, his peak is going to be – oh, Hayden in the draft. There you go. His Sorry. peak is um, – a slight lesser version of Lamar Jackson. Interesting. Really? Like yeah. current Lamar Jackson? Lesser than Lamar Jackson. Yep. Ah. He's, gonna be, so, he's a, he's a also, much better thrower than Lamar Jackson. I think you could argue that. Um, but I think Lamar Jackson's got a cannon. Um, I think Lamar Jackson can easily be a top 10 quarterback in the league though so i uh, and that's like that's not next year that's going forward but yeah i, I think kyler murray will be a slightly lesser version of lamar jackson i don't think i don't like his size i don't think he's as powerful as lamar jackson um i think you know over the span of their careers i think um i think lamar jackson will probably be the better passer um Interesting. So I, I think Kyler Murray is a good passer. I think he's accurate. Um, I think he actually has a relatively good arm. But I, th- I actually think that he's going to throw more interceptions than maybe you think, Hayden. Uh, not to say that he's going to be an interception machine. I but agree. I, just think that, I think that yeah. he's going – there were throws that he could make in college that I don't think he's going to be able to get away with in yeah. the pros. Yeah. Um, yeah. His running ability is good, but I also think he's going to need to be careful with that because he is, uh, you know, a little smaller. But ultimately, for me, I just think that there are about seven or eight quarterbacks that I would take long-term future over Kyler Murray. Um, but that's all I have to say about Kyler Murray. So I don't know if y'all have any last words about him. Nope. I'm excited to piss y'all off with number nine. This is going to piss me off. Go ahead. <laughs> this is going to. It's going to really piss you off. Number nine is Daniel Jones. No. Yeah. No. I'm kicking you from the call. I'm Uh, kicking you from the call. I was expecting this to go somewhere else. But this pisses me off in a different way. You've been muted. You've been muted, Ian. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to unmute him. Daniel Jones. He, He did have a good preseason, but you know who else had a good preseason? Deshaun Kaiser. 
Where is he? <laughs> exactly. Hey, I seriously don't know how to how to unmute him. I'm. Can you hear him? No, I can't. But I've tried this <laughs> once. <laughs> I've tried this once. <laughs> I actually muted you once, and then I had to end the call to. Um, All right. So start it. Let me kick him, and then. We'll have him join again. Sorry, guys. Um, this is a bit of raw footage right here, but uh, hopefully when he comes back, he's not muted. Yeah. Real quick, what pick are you on in your, uh, in your fantasy uh, draft? I picked at uh, – let's see. I picked at – Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I picked Michael Thomas and Julio Jones. Can you see me? No. no. What the fuck? Should I mute him again just for fun? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do that. All right, guys. So Daniel, Daniel, Jones Daniel Jones will be a starter in New York by week three. That doesn't mean anything. And he's going to be the best quarterback, the most accurate quarterback, um, and the most fundamental quarterback that comes out of this draft. You don't watch football. Daniel Jones is well. Who was was that? Were there any quarterbacks taken? Oh, it was Kyler Murray, right? Kyler Murray. Dwayne Haskins will Dwayne be better Haskins. than I think. Daniel I like Dwayne Jones. Haskins more. But Daniel Jones, eh, he could be decent. I'm not going to say that he's going to be trash but he's more accurate than Kyler Murray is no not Daniel flashy, Jones he's is not as fun to watch but I think people are putting a lot of stock in his preseason I don't think that he's a spectacular quarterback I think preseason means absolutely nothing I and watched him very minimally in preseason did you watch him at Duke I, I that's did not me I, okay. I lived with a huge Duke fan I watched yeah, him at Duke sorry for that too but that's okay um yeah, I, I, um, I'm not big on Daniel Jones, just to be honest with you. But I, you know what I think of him is, I think mm-hmm. of him close to Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, his Tar Heel. Yeah, I don't think Mitchell Trubisky is that good, but I think Daniel Jones could be about that good of a game manager. Uh, I will say this: I think Mitchell Trubisky's ceiling is better than Daniel Jones. I know Hayden's looking at me funny. I right, think that right now, yeah. Uh, see, I I, I will say this about Mitchell I mean, Trubisky. I haven't seen him play in the NFL, and I'm not going to – that's why these two are 9 and 10, because I haven't seen either of them play in the NFL. So I'm not going to, you know, put okay. them anywhere. I'm not going to put them higher than someone I've seen play in the NFL. Okay. Um, but I do like Daniel Jones more than I like Kyler Murray. Interesting, interesting. You want to know who my number nine is? Mitchell Trubisky. <laughs> wow. Um, that's honestly, I don't even think that's a knock on him. Uh, I mean, it might be, I guess, but uh, it is. If you can think of eight other uh, quarterbacks on their rookie deals that are better than Mitchell Trubisky, yeah, I could that's definitely. A knock on I, that's definitely one, two, a knock on three, him. Seven of them are, in my opinion, very clearly better than him. Um, one of them could be a little bit of a toss up, maybe even a slight to Mitchell Trubisky, but I don't think that he's going to have an excellent season this year uh but going forward like i said i think it's hard for a game manager to escape that game manager threshold but he does have the tools i just don't think that he has the tools this season uh right? i don't think he's going to take advantage of them this season do you think he's much else other than a game manager is that right now no is that, no you think that's all he is uh, at this point yeah I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's going to be a good quarterback. I don't know. He's 3,300 yards, 24 and 12. He could, well, be, I think he he could be better. He I think he'll be better. Lot. He'll. I think he'll be better. I just don't think that he's anything special right now. Um, yeah, I think he's better than a lot of these. And we'll we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Hayden, number nine. Uh. Mr. Dak Prescott. I think he's better than than, than Mitchell Trubisky. Look, I, I I'm all for. Cannot fucking wait to see the eight 
quarterbacks that you put over Dak Prescott? It's easy. Going into this season? Yep. Going, going into, this, into season. this season. Eight Hayden. quarterbacks on their rookie deals better than Dak. You're, yes. you're on drugs. Yes. No. Ian, no. Can you, do you know this, the numbers that Dak Prescott had post the Amari Cooper uh, trade? He didn't watch. It's not like – I'm, if, I'm not you gonna... mirrored, if you mirrored the season for an entire season on that back half of the season, Amari Cooper had just as good of a season as Michael Thomas did. You're on drugs. No, that, that's true. Look at that's true. I'm, I'm, not <laughs> to okay, okay. I'm just saying. Dak Prescott had is the a most 67.7 overrated, completion is percentage. He's the most no. overrated quarterback in the NFL. Dak he, Prescott he had is the most more yards. quarterback in the NFL. NFL. Their yards You're per attempt was so the same. Dak Prescott threw the ball more times for more yards, had 22 touchdowns to eight interceptions, so not as much of mm-hmm. either for his interception and touchdown or uh, vice versa ratio. Mm-hmm. Better than Mitchell Trubisky. His completion percentage is better than Mitchell Trubisky. He mm-hmm. runs better than Mitchell Trubisky. I disagree with you on that, but I just don't think Mitch Trubisky hasn't gets to run as much as Dak does. But anyway, go ahead. I actually think that Dak should run more. Um, I I think they both should run more. Because you're gonna I, have go you're ahead. Have two quarterbacks on, on this list that are, I don't know who they are. But He's I'm gonna say Lamar Jackson. And you're gonna well that which is gonna piss me off. Lamar of Jackson is better really than Dak Prescott piss- going you're into next year. So Okay, good. I, I should punch you in the face. I should, I should take your hat off right now, your, your ridiculous Saints hat, and punch right. you in the face with this right. ring finger. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to punch you in the face, but I should. Number eight. Oh, should. Oh. should I do my number? I'll do my number eight. I'm, I'm a little click. Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson. I like Lamar Jackson, but he's not better than Dak Prescott. Nope. This season, at least. He has a higher ceiling. Uh, his arm is actually... Ian, you mentioned it. He actually has a, a really strong arm. He has a cannon. Surprisingly good deep ball at times. Exactly. But um, I just think that, you know, it, his passing, I do expect to improve. By how much, I don't know. But his run game, I think, is phenomenal. And I think people think, oh, if he's just a running quarterback, then he's not going to be that good. No, if he can run as well as he did last season, which I think he will. Michael Vick. Then he could be Michael Vick. And I know that's kind of a cliche thing to say and about that's better than Dak Prescott. No. No. Kennedy! Kennedy! <laughs> Kennedy! <laughs> that was bold. That's no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Dak Prescott is not better than Michael Vick. But Lamar Jackson will not be to Michael Vick's level this season. I I bet you he will. Whoa, 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 no, wait, hold on. No, 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 no. No, he will not. No, 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 He'll throw for three thousand yards and rush for over a thousand. Okay, he will not rush for over a thousand. Uh, Kennedy, him, Kennedy, I. I'll you know how many quarter, how many quarterbacks have rushed for a thousand? Probably One. zero. One. Michael it was Vick. Michael Vick. Yeah, okay. exactly. Thank not you. Not in year two. Not in year two. Everyone knew Michael Vick was going to run the ball. Kennedy, the the. The offense is literally built around Lamar Jackson running. Mm-hmm. But Michael Vick at least could throw Lamar the ball Jackson a little bit better. Lamar Jackson will be better. the Alvin Kamara to Mark Ingram. No. Yeah, Kennedy, yes. I'm telling you. Even I, Alvin I, Kamara didn't get 1,000 yards rushing. Because Alvin Kamara caught 90 passes. Yeah, but he was splitting also, with Mark Ingram. Also, you think about the fact that it- – he, Lamar Jackson's going from Alex Collins to Mark Ingram as his running back. So he's going to have help in the backfield. So I don't think he rushes for as many yards this year as he did last year. Yeah, I think he'll and be if he, a great he does, it's going to be close. I just don't think Question. he'll be the same he passer as, for a as Michael Vick. Right now, right now, if Lamar Jackson puts up 3,000 passing, 1,000 rushing, will we, can we all come on here and say that he is undoubtedly better than Dak? Well, if Dak wins the Super Bowl, then we have to have another conversation. But yeah. no, I don't think he's better can say than that. Dak. No. Why? Not, not Why? definitively. Dak Dak has the best running back in the NFL behind him, probably 
at one point was the best offensive line. We'll say top three. He might be the best this year, if healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, his number one receiver is you could argue, if you want to argue top 15, y'all will probably argue top 10. At the end of the day, I'm not going to argue top 10. I didn't have him in my top 10. Um, so, I would say barely top 15. The mole rat will argue top 10. Look, I'm just saying, for what we saw, and you're saying if Lamar Jackson has that type of season, sure, he might be better than Dak Prescott. We have to look at the touchdowns to interceptions and everything like that, but he might be better than Dak Prescott if we have that conversation. But what based on what makes you think that he's going to be a 3,000-yard passer with 1,000 rushing yards? I just know everything I'm hearing coming out about the fact that he's going to run more this year. Uh, he's also improved as a passer. You could just ask anyone that. Uh, I agree. So then, no, yeah. to, no one is arguing with you on him and, being a good passer. And he has more weapons. Mark Ingram is a underrated pass catcher. We talked about that on the last episode, Kennedy. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's any – he Most. definitely gets 3,000 yards passing. I think, if anything, we'll say 800 at the least rushing yards. I think that he will rush for around 800 – Maybe more. So that's better than uh, Dak. That's, that's great. That's fun. Dak. But last okay. season, based like I, I think that he's going to improve as a passer. But he he threw for seventy five yards a game. Oh, sorry. That's that's based on sixteen games. Um, they he, they they didn't he even started start. seven, so he only threw for about one hundred fifty yards a game. But but they but literally, if you watch them, they wouldn't throw the ball. That's fine. I. I'm just saying, as a passer, he wasn't spectacular last season. I think that he will get better, but I don't think that he's going to be an all-pro or pro bowl or even close passer. I think he's going to be a good enough passer who can run the football and put them in the playoffs. You and I both have him there because Lamar Jackson is better, but I I don't think that his mechanics are going to go from bad to just great all in one have, season. He doesn't have bad – he has bad mechanics? Throwing the I think ball? That his, I think his mechanics need to be get better. If, if his mechanics are what they need to be now, then we're in trouble. Because his, Kennedy, his accuracy apparently eight? is enough. My number eight was Lamar Jackson. Oh, Who's yeah, 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 right. yeah Hayden. No, mine's Sam Darnold. Okay. I'm not mad at that pick at all. I have Mitch Trubisky. I'm higher on Trubisky. Hayden, did, did you say yours? Mitch Trubisky. He's just one spot above Dak. I don't think that's that blasphemous, to be honest. That's not but that blasphemous. But I think I – think... I did have to give him a hard time. I also – did he just freeze? I've watched a lot of both. He's a better thrower than Dak. I've watched a lot of both. I'm going to piss both y'all off. Uh, are we at number seven? Number seven. Yeah. yeah. This is what I think – if this is what I think it is, I'm going to throw up. Mine? Yeah, go. Mark Jackson. Oh, okay. Never mind. Damn, I'm higher. I'm higher on Lamar than y'all are. Oof. I like Lamar. I, I really do. Like, I think that he's going to be a valuable runner. But I just think that there are, like, my, so my number seven is Sam Darnold. Um, same, same, same. And, and I think that my six quarterbacks better than Sam Darnold are, are pretty clearly better than Lamar Jackson at this point. Um, now, long term, we could have a different conversation, but oh, my list is gonna make y'all mad. My list is gonna make both y'all mad. I think my list is gonna make nobody mad, um, except for you, maybe you, Ian, but later. But it will. I know it will. But it's alright. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, so what I'm are we at? Six. Ian, Ian, do you have Dak in your top five? Number six. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. No, 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 no. I, I don't I want to hear it. Say my, my seven is Sam Darnold. Yeah, you said that. You said oh, that. I did? Okay. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Number six, who is lucky I put him as high on this list as I did. Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Oh, no. That's literally – so, I'm going to so... leave it at that. He's not a good quarterback. I'm going to leave it with that. Why? You, you stood up and left when I oh, – He is my. a – if you think you, you always say that, you know, Kennedy, you alluded to it, and I'm not going to disagree with you. Dak Prescott as a game manager, 
Jared Goff is a product of this system. Jared Goff is not a good quarterback. <laughs> I knew, I, was I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. I think I've said it since the NFL season ended. The Rams are an absolutely stacked roster. He says and I think make sense. Jared Goff the things the, the things you say do not make sense. Ian, Ian, Ian. Look, I understand. Did you just say Jared Goff said, is a game manager? Yes, he's not a good quarterback. Jared Goff is 700 yards, 32 touchdowns, Jared Goff, one QBR. Jared Goff is good because the Rams on paper are the most talented team in the NFL. Yeah, Not right. true. They're yeah, the most there. talented defense. Yeah, talented right. defense. Offensively, the wide receivers are – they're not the most stacked wide the receivers. Goff is their best wide receiver. Don't even get me started on Brandon Cooks. He's, he's good. Yeah. He's, Brandon Cooks he's is overrated. Good. Brandon Cooks he's is a really good. He's a very good so overrated. Receiver. Look, I'm not even saying Cooper that he's. Cooper Cup is underrated, and Brandon Cooks is an overrated. overrated. He's a no. He's an overrated one. He if you ask people, as a number two if you receiver, ask, if you ask casual people who's the best receiver on that team, most of them would say Brandon Cooks, and well, that that's is not, that's not true. Okay, I just want to make sure we hold on though. So he has good receivers. I'm not going to deny that. But did did you have Cooper Cup as a top ten receiver? Uh, I did. Yeah. Oh. I did. Did you? I think. Did I he did. have? I'm pretty sure I did. Ten. I want to say if if even. yeah, it was it was right. I did. I did. I, I had him at seven, but I'm I'm really high on him. He can't stay healthy, so there's that. But when, when he is healthy, healthy, he's pretty good. He's really good when he's, he's pretty good. I think he's uh, extremely underrated. He's, he's he's really good. I don't think that he's great, but he's really I agree. good. I agree. If he's exactly. healthy, then he probably is a top ten court. Uh, he is wide really receiver. good, and he makes Jared Goff look really. Brandon good. Cooks probably benefited off of Cooper Cup's injury, as far as statistics go. So there's yeah. that. Brandon Robert Cooks has Woods. played with three fantastic quarterbacks that make him look better than he should even sniff a football field. Brandon Cooks is a disgrace as a receiver. I'm just saying, I don't think that there's any way that you can convince me that that Jared Goff is a game manager. He threw 32 touchdowns last season, 28 the season before. 4,700 yards. 4,700 yards this season. Manager? Both of his last two seasons, he threw for a QB rating of over 100, but I guess game managers can do that too. But his volume numbers are good. They're really good, actually. And I, I mean, I know that, yeah, sure, he has really good players on his team, but... They let's have a really good on, quarterback throwing to them. Let's put him on the Steelers and see how successful he is. I think he'd be great. I don't think so. I, I think he's better than Ben Roethlisberger right now. Give me Jared Goff over Ben Roethlisberger. They're close. Even even in Ben's prime. I thought Ben was extremely close. Oh, okay. Ben, okay. Ben, ben Roethlisberger is extremely close. talk about overrated quarterbacks? Am I the ben only Roth- person that's not going to say something blasphemous today? Ben Roethlisberger is extremely overrated. No, no, Kennedy, you're coming up on some blasphemy here pretty soon. I can All right, what it. are we at? Number six? Yep. Dak Prescott. You're hey. dumb. <laughs> That's too high, but okay. Well, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be mad when Ian has him at number two. I dare him to put him at number two. I, I honestly I, think that he I might have mute, number two. I will mute him again and leave I, him. Let, let's, let's, you and I, because I think Ian just stepped off. Let's do a prediction of what Ian, no, he's, he's back, okay. Nope. Let's do Go a ahead. prediction Go of ahead. what Ian is Go going ahead. to say. That's a joke. Num- number one, Ian's going to say Mahomes probably. Yeah. Then Everyone. Dak. Then if, Baker. If he, if he has Dak over Deshaun Watson, Kennedy, I swear to God. I'm I swear to, to God. I will... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. And he's gonna I'm have done. Baker over uh, Deshaun Watson, and then he's gonna have Deshaun Watson, and then he's going to have. We still talking about me? Yeah, yeah. What are we at? Number six. Number yeah, six. I said Dak Prescott. You said. I said Jared Bum Goff. I have Lamar Jackson. That's fine. Just kidding. Wait, wait. No. 
I read that wrong. I have Carson Wentz. Sorry. Carson Wentz. He's not even on my list because I left him off. But I, it's not. That's not purposeful. That's because he, you know, I, I figured he got paid, so I didn't even. Oh. I didn't. I'm pretty sure he's on his rookie. He's on his rookie deal, right? He got paid earlier this offseason, but he was in the same draft class as. Uh, yeah. as that. Oh, okay. So he's still he on got, his rookie deal. It's yeah. not. He got, paid last this. Year and start, he got paid last year and it started this year. Quarterbacks in their first five seasons are eligible for this list. That's we could have just said that, but. Okay. No, he yeah, got, so he that's got why I left him this off. Season. All right, so I have I have him at six. Um, my big thing is injuries, and when playing last year, he struggled pretty badly. He struggled pretty badly. He has not played in a playoff game, um, and he got handed the but Super it, Bowl ring. And you also, he was going to win MVP okay. until he got hurt. Okay. Which is something. Which is something Dak will never even be able to do. No, Dak's rookie season. There was almost a conversation about it. Both those rookies had a little, a little spark about MVP. All right, look. You're on drugs if you believe Dak. No. I so maybe I'm a little higher on Carson Wentz than both of you. Um, I like his talent. I just wish you know he played better last year. They sucked when he played. They sucked. They I don't think he sucked. Terrible. They were terrible. He was pretty bad. He was pretty bad. My biggest knock on Carson Wentz has been his completion percentage, and he hell. threw about 70% this season. 21 touchdowns, seven interceptions. That's an 11 game, so maybe he could have cut the picks down, but that's not that, that bad. Um, most of it if, was – what was that? If Carson Wentz was on my list, I would have put him where Jared Goff is and pushed Kyler Murray off the list. Okay. So golf would have been at seven. Would have been at six. Carson Wentz is my number five. Did I say that? Oh. Yeah. No. We so, just got okay. There. So he he is uh, you know as much as I think that he's a little overrated, he was an MVP candidate two seasons ago until he tore his ACL. Uh, he I think he had a good season last season. They just weren't winning with him. But he was playing fine, in my opinion. Um, the only issue that I really have going forward with him is, is injuries. Mm-hmm. And I still do want to see his completion percentage stay about, about where it is. Uh, I was, you know, 69.6% is actually pretty solid. Nice. But um, if he can stay healthy this season, which I, I'm not going to sit here and assume that he's... Most of the games that he missed last season was because he had a, an injury that he could have played with. But they wanted to sit him out because yeah. they probably weren't going to make the playoffs, and they did because of Nick Foles. And then they didn't want to risk their, injuring their, him further. Their schedule was softer, by the way. But yeah, no, I agree. Let's let's not let's not act like Nick Foles came in and completely turned the team around. No, yeah, they, I mean I agree. They, they played pretty crappy teams. But my point in saying this is just that Jared got or sorry, uh, Carson Wentz. He was playing just fine. He could have played that last stretch of the season. They just didn't want to risk it. Um, I think he would have been fine. But that's to say, I think that he's going to have a really good season this year. But I just, I am a little worried about the injuries. So I keep, I kept him at five. But I think that he could honestly be higher than this. Talent wise, yes. yes. I, would, I would have had him at six, but he could have been higher if he, if it wasn't for injury concern. So I, I don't have him on there, but that's where I would have fit him in. At number mm. five, I have Trubisky, quarterback that's better than Jared Goff. Don't me. Don't. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Did he just? Yeah, he's, oh. oh, there he is. Oh, okay. man. Hey, buddy. Oh, man. Woo. Go ahead. Go ahead. Where are we at? Go ahead. Hey, who's your five? I have Mr. Lamar Jackson. Okay. I mean. Wait, who have you named so far? Uh, Kyler Murray, Dak, Mitch, Sam Darnold, Carson Wentz, Lamar Jackson. So you, you, four of those I'm not like that mad about, but. 
Carson Wentz, do you think that he, he's going to be better than Carson Wentz? I do. I honestly think he's going to have a Michael Vick year. I, 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 like, I'm not, even, I'm not even trolling anymore. I think that he will have a poor man's Michael Vick year, but still very notable in the rushing and improved as, as a passer. That's where I'm at with Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I, I, a playoff I, year too. A playoff year. Like I'm not gonna sit here and say that he's gonna be bad. I just, I guess I, we have different trajectories for his his growth this season. Yeah, and I, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not mad that he's low on yours because obviously last year he wasn't fantastic. But I just know from everything I'm hearing. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess I'm going based off of what I've been told. Okay. Well, are you are you being told that by uh, Saints people, like the the blog people that you do, or is that mostly like, no, just reading through through sources, even at you know through you ESPN? Okay. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I wish I had Adam Schefter on speed dial. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, just even even things that I'm hearing from, you know, ESPN. Um, I a couple of the guys that I work with have the connections at ESPN, so I get a lot of, you know. Okay, I I guess I just think that a lot of that is maybe a little hype. Yeah, a little hyped up because of his potential, but but I do think that he's. I don't think that it's like false rumors or anything i just think that yeah i mean i I think that he could have improved up to this but maybe not all the way you know mm -hmm. uh, i i don't i don't have an issue with that okay so we're at number four now number four yes okay uh i'm at baker mayfield hold on actually yeah yeah i have baker mayfield um I can maybe see him being one spot higher. I I wasn't like a giant Baker Mayfield guy this season. Um, I think a lot of people really hype him up because of what he has now. But last season, I didn't think he was. I thought he was a really good rookie. I didn't think he was a top ten passer. But this year, I think he could be a top ten passer, especially he was very with Odell Beckham. Exciting, and he 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 was he was very fun to watch, and I think that. Helps his stock a lot. I think people like to talk about him. Yeah, no, I agree, but I I don't think that that's reason to put him in the top ten just yet. No. Uh, that said, this season I could see him being a top ten quarterback, and he was in my top ten for. I, you know that my top three, two of them I think are absolutely one hundred percent better than. Yeah. Baker. Mayfield. I agree. One of I them agree. I think is it's close, but it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say my number four. Um, my number four is Jared Goff. That's really um, high. Ian has no idea what he's talking about. He thinks Dak Prescott is better than Jared Goff. He is. At what? Outside of running, at what? Um, I think Jared Goff is more accurate. Um, Not even close. Yeah. Jared Goff is more accurate in the middle of the field than Dak Prescott is, and I think that's the only thing um, that he truly has on deck. <laughs> go ahead, Kennedy. Where are we? No, you need. I said Baker oh, Mayfield. Oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Ian. Uh, I was gonna try to fuck with you guys and say Patrick Mahomes, but I could, like I couldn't even get the words out of my mouth while <laughs> yes. laughing. Yeah, I, uh, no, I would have called a hit out on you. Years. My number four is uh, Baker Mayfield. You have Baker Mayfield, too? Yeah. And, I, okay. man, I, the entire time you were talking after you said yours, I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw it up and I'm going to put Holmes or Mahomes right here and just see what kind of reaction I get out of hate. Yeah. I couldn't even do it. I don't know if I would have been able to take that seriously because you had him as a top three or four quarterback in our overall list. So I would have, I would have been mad just for you saying that in, in the first place. But yeah, no, I'm I'm glad you didn't say that. I am. Uh, yeah, my number three is Jared Goff. Jared Goff. Uh. <laughs> hey. 
What? I'm not mad at Doug Kennedy. You have Rain Dakota Prescott on your list. Huh? Where did you have Dak on your list? Six. All right. Yeah, I, I, um, let's see. Who did I have over Dak? And that's Dak. high. Dak I, just, I cannot <laughs> wait for NFL football to start. Look, I could see Carson Wentz with the injuries being lower than Dak Prescott. I don't like it, but I could see that. Jared Goff, I think, is 100% better than Dak Prescott. I really don't think it's that big of a d- debate. Uh, he's a more accurate passer. His deep ball is more accurate. He's... You know, I think that's really what it comes down to. Quarterbacks need to be need to be accurate. And mm-hmm. Dak, for as much as I like him, uh, I don't love his his overall accuracy. Um, I don't think it's and bad. So I don't think it's. Nearly- I agree with you. I, I think that's your one knock you can put on Dak Prescott. It's his accuracy. Um, I, I think he improved his long ball. I don't think he's in as inaccurate as people, you know, I as agree. he's portrayed. But so Jared Goff <laughs> is more accurate in the middle of the field. Short and deep. Short and deep. I I don't short. I don't know. Look, I, okay. So here's the thing. I think that Dak Prescott is uh, above. I think he's more accurate than people give him credit for. Mostly you, Hayden, but he's I do above. think that. I would say, um, man, yeah, no, Dak Prescott is, is – I, I would say he's more accurate, but I just don't think that he's nearly as accurate as Jared Goff. And I also think that um, – gosh, I, I honestly, I think I just blanked on air. I'm really sorry, but – Because okay. you can't think of anything. No. Because you know funny. Dak's better than Goff. No. Y'all are bad. No. All right. Um, number three. Number three. Let's see. Uh, oh, no, we're at number two now. Number two. No, oh, I'm at number three. I'm, I'm at one. number three. Wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who are y'all at? Go ahead, Ian. Dak Prescott's at number three, and I'm tired of talking about him, so. Okay. I'm good. I don't. I don't. I don't even, even want to get into than, that. Other than want to that. other than Jared Goff. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. None you of these quarterbacks. You might be years. more. You might be more biased than Skip Bayless on the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. I, I. I. You might be more biased than. Skip. I really don't think so. I really don't think so. Let me tell you what Dak Prescott lacks, because I don't think his accuracy is that bad. But what he lacks, um, he waits until the wide receiver is open instead of throwing as the receiver's on his cut. I see it all the time in replays, and it's the most annoying thing. He needs to throw receivers open better, and I think that Jared Goff is a lot better at doing that than Dak Prescott. <sighs> I will not argue that with you one bit. He's a bum. No. I he think I, Jared Goff does his have – His receiver's right here, and he throws it 20 yards over him. <laughs> You're dumb. You're dumb. Go ahead and <laughs> watch it happen Go. over Just... and over and over. Just spit out your number three. What is it, Baker Mayfield? Yeah, it is. We know it is. Are you sure? I guarantee you it's Baker Mayfield. It's Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Kennedy, I'm sorry. I, I, I had him at fifth, but I honestly think Baker is going to have a much, much better year than Deshaun Watson this year. Why? Throwing, throwing the ball. More weapons. He is a better pocket passer. He's behind a much better offensive line. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that Baker is necessarily so much better than Deshaun. I just think he's going to have a much better year than Deshaun. If Deshaun Watson were on the Cleveland Browns, I would potentially be, pick them to make it be, to the Super Bowl. I, I would too. I would too. They would be my Super Bowl pick with Deshaun. I Watson. would too. But but what I'm saying is, in terms of being better next year, Baker will have a better year okay. than Deshaun Watson. Okay. Weapons I, around him. I don't know, man. I just think that Deshaun Watson. So 
spoiler, he's my number two. Uh, Deshaun Watson is... It's close. And, and Kennedy, you know how high I am on Deshaun Watson. Yeah, I just think that just for everything that Deshaun Watson had going against him last season, other than obviously DeAndre Hopkins, he, he was still a top five quarterback. And he was the most sacked and quarterback me. in the NFL. He was the most sacked quarterback in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And he didn't. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pull up his stats real quick. Line in the NFL. He had no running game at all. And none of those Watson. things have changed. None yeah, of those. They have a better Sean offensive Watson. line. They, they added. They added. Line. They added a decent left tackle. That doesn't mean the rest of the offensive line is. He's a pretty good left tackle, and left tackle is probably the most important position for Deshaun yep. Watson. Yep, I agree with that. So I, I think that he's, he's a, better. He's a decent left tackle. He's a he's good a, left he's tackle. A pretty good left tackle. And tackle. I think Duke Johnson's gonna. He, he's gonna be successful running the ball. I think he'll be more successful. Do you want to know what's funny? Duke Johnson was the third running back on the Browns. They have Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. Exactly. Thank you. That's what I'm saying. That's what. That's my point. That's fine, but that's still a better. It's a. It's a step up for Deshaun Watson. See, this is this is my point. I expect him to be better next season. Always say is we're not arguing about who we. You know the Browns. I don't know. I think the Texans will be better than the Browns. But you're saying the Browns have better personnel surrounding Baker Mayfield, and that's why you're taking him over to Sean Watson? I yes, think but it's very Deshaun close. Watson Again, will be not... the better quarterback. And Deshaun the Watson better thrower? Too. I disagree with that. So, okay, I would say Baker Mayfield might be the better thrower, but I don't think it's that far. Deshaun Watson is also a better runner, and I just Again. think he might be a better decision maker. Yes. Also, I would say See, I, I, I trust Deshaun Watson. I I just I trust Deshaun Watson more in the clutch too than oh, See, most, no, I, most I, 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 just, I disagree over Baker. Per, I would say absolutely. Baker. Oh, one hundred percent. I would say Deshaun Baker. Watson over. I wouldn't say any quarterback in the league, but it, there are very few quarterbacks that I would take over Deshaun Watson in the clutch. Interesting. Interesting. That's that's where we disagree. I guess I would absolutely. And part of that, I, I will say, might go back to Clemson. But even then, like, that tells you about his mental toughness. He was able to take down one of the most talented teams ever and then had one of, a phenomenal rookie season. He might have actually even been in the MVP race until he got hurt, of course. Kept it going last season with a bad offensive line. I think Deshaun Watson, we're talking about next season, but... I might even go as far as to say, going forward, I think that he's my number two young quarterback beyond next season. No, I think I think if we did beyond next season, if we did next season and then we did beyond next season, I think my list, it's going to stay similar. Interesting. I would say mine stays similar, but I, maybe I would switch. Uh, I would put Dak Prescott a little further down than... No, no, I would probably put him down below Sam Darnold. I'll be right back. Y'all, y'all keep talking. I would, I would maybe move Sam Darnold above Dak. Um, <laughs> oh, Lamar my Dak. God! What? No! Why? Sam Did Darnold was... Sam Darnold play football last year. He was a rookie. wasn't great. With no weapons. He wasn't great. He wasn't. I, mean, I, I, I don't think he's really uh, as big of a deal as people had him coming into the league, but I still think he's a really good quarterback who's going to be one of the better quarterbacks in the league going forward. So I, I have him. Uh, he's got, see. other than Daniel Jones, and it's close, I think Sam Darnold has the lowest floor on this. No, you know what? I'd say he has the lowest floor on this list i could see sam darnold being a decent starter i could see sam darnold being out of the league in five years lowest floor for me would have to be lamar jackson mitchell trubisky no no lamar jackson kyler murray mitchell trubisky what i miss and then dak prescott hey, i was just saying Hayden, that i would, on your I would list. switch dak prescott and sam darnold if we were saying going forward or, that's yeah. not even close. I'd say next season. You're dumb. Hey, Hayden, on your list, who has the lowest floor? 
Who has the lowest floor? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That's tough. Dak. <clears throat> it wasn't that tough, apparently, for you. <laughs> I don't think that's close. Do you think that Lamar Mitch, Jackson... Mitch, Mitch Trubisky, maybe. My number one is Patrick Mahomes. I'm done talking tonight. I'm Yeah, I've got... Uh, I think everyone has probably yeah. Patrick Mahomes. Yep. But, no, I, I would say if we were doing just future quarterbacks in general beyond next season. I may make Kyler Murray a little higher. Uh, I would too. Mitchell He'd Trubisky be above Dak. Fall. Mitch Trubisky would fall. I would put Sam Darnold over Dak, and that's, that's Sam about Darnold, it. Sam Darnold's already over Dak for mine. So I put Sam Darnold higher than Lamar Jackson and probably Jared Goff and maybe Carson Wentz. I can't believe I do a podcast with the two biggest Dak Prescott haters on this planet. I like Dak, Dak Prescott, Prescott is a bum. I'm just I'm I'm pretty realistic with him. Here's the thing: the last thing that I'll say, weird since we just mentioned Kyler Murray, or I, at least I did. The seven quarterbacks that I feel very comfortable saying will be better than him are. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to time that right. Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Baker Mayfield. Carson Wentz, Jared Goff, Trevor Lawrence, and I think Sam Darnold. You could also argue Justin mm-hmm. Herbert. So there are eight yeah. quarterbacks in the league that I would probably take over Kyler Murray going forward for the rest of their careers. So that's why I'm, I, I'm lower not, on Kyler I'm Murray. not mad at that. I mean, I, I think the going forward, this age of quarterbacks, probably we could compare to the deepest ever, at least yeah. going forward. So Don't maybe I that. maybe I don't think his ceiling is low. I think more so his ceiling compared to the rest of the yeah, quarterbacks. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I mean, he's more he's more a runner than a thrower, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, but yeah, no, I I have no issue with that. But <laughs> the fact that yeah, I would say Dak or Mitch has the lowest ceiling. Hey, not, not um, Lamar Jackson, because I personally I think if Lamar Jackson stayed about where he is now, that's that's a lower ceiling than most of these guys. But I don't think Lamar Jackson or, or, will stay stay where he is um, now. Hayden, yeah. text me your address because mm-hmm. um, after this weekend, I'm gonna buy this for you. Okay. Mhm. I think we'll that's see. a good good way to uh, way to end the show. I don't want to ever see that again. So Yeah, exactly. Thank yes. you, Kevin. Well, do you wear large? <laughs> I'm not even playing with you. If Texas wins, I will buy you the shirt and you will wear it. Honestly, that would actually be kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. I'll send it to you, Kennedy, instead. No, I'll just burn it. That's what we do at a and a- We just burn Longhorn stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for listening uh, to See Lunch Sports with us. Go ahead and give us a follow on Twitter at episode. Lunch Sports. Me at Kennedy Curly forty four C U R L E Y at I Sellers thirty seven and at that boy Clink capital T capital B capital K. Thank you for listening. Uh, we will be back on in the next few days, and yep. until then, y'all have a good start of your football season. With oh man, I'm so excited. I'll see y'all later. <laughs>